When I started the role at that point, um, NHS Kent and Medway were ranking very low in terms of our blood pressure control for COF, especially for those under the age of 80, um, in terms of treatment to target for blood pressure. So on that basis, we were, as a system, trying to find a way to try and improve those um, improve that data. For us, it came at a time when um, it was the first year that block payments had stopped for COF, so that was an advantage, um, but also the end of the COF year was, was nearing quite quickly. Um, so we really want to take advantage of that and take advantage of the, of the kind of um, focus that that would put onto uh, blood pressure for GPs and really um, find a way to enable them to get as much done as they possibly could in that short time. At the time, I, we had various ideas and various projects going on, going on across Kent Meadow, which had been successful, but there were quite small pockets of work here and there across the, across the county, um, some of which have been rolled out further now and they're doing really well. Um, some of them really tackling things like health inequalities and getting people out into the community to try and um, find those hard to reach populations. But for us, the main issue was um, that the denominator just wasn't big enough. So we were not actually getting blood pressure from those who knew what their blood pressure was. They had monitors at home, but that information just wasn't coming into GP practices in any kind of efficient way um, for lots of us. Um, before COVID, a lot of this was done um, just opportunistically. So patients would come in, have a face-to-face -face appointment, would have their blood pressure done whilst they're in clinic. Um, and certainly that was, um, for the vast majority, that was, that was the way we did it. Previously, blood pressure machines were quite expensive and, and were not kind of a day-to-day -day thing that people had in their homes. Um, but COVID uh, has changed things in terms of the case mix now. We probably see you know, 70% of our patients face-to-face -face now and the rest are either via telephone or remotely otherwise. It's essentially, Trying to contact those patients was, again, usually quite a manual task um, and usually rushed at the end of the coffee year. Um, people kind of uh, running around trying to make phone calls, asking patients what their blood pressure is, sending out letters in the old days. Um, and really, um, it was all very time consuming, essentially. Before the trial, only um, a small percentage of practices across Kent and Medway um, had access to batch messaging um, via AccuRx. Um, as part of the trial, we gave access to all 180 plus practices, um, and within a few days, we had almost 98% utilisation, which was which was incredible. And I think the advantage was that patients used, uh, sorry, practices already used AccuRx in their day-to-day -day work. They were very used to the user interface, um, so just turning on a new function was wasn't too much of a jump. Also it's easy to use, it, it isn't a difficult product and you don't need to be an expert to, to do this and, and actually the beauty of AccuRx is that um, staff across our entire organisation can use it and they all do for various parts of their roles and in fact once you enable somebody to say hey look did you know you can do this and this it then kind of inspires them to think of other ways they could embed it into their workflows and, and giving staff the freedom to do that has been really powerful. Giving access to all these practices uh, to batch messaging was, was the first part and also giving them access to the Flores was the second part because um, m most didn't have access to that, to that part of AccuRx either. We could see that we had um, about 58% uh, um, treatment to target for that population, um, which was um, well away from the NHS England target, which is 77% by March 2024. So we really wanted to try and make uh, a dent in that. The pilot was backed up by uh, lunch and learn sessions. So we had um, lots of managers, GPs uh, joining those calls and learning how the product could be used to, to enable them to do this bit of work. And I think the end of the coffee year really put the right kind of focus and pressure on practices to, to get going. Um, so I think uh, having a four week pilot and having a time limit meant that people just acted quickly, which was, which was really great. The other thing we did was work with our community pharmacy uh, colleagues and we created an ICB kind of map of all the pharmacies that had been actively involved in doing hypertension case finding for us. Uh, and lots of GPs didn't realise that they didn't only do case finding, they could also do blood pressure checks in those with known hypertension. Um, so that was um, new information for many of us. Um, and the text message that we then adapted meant that we could say, hey, if you've got a blood pressure printer at home, send us in your result. If you don't, then um, here's a map you can link to and you can find your local chemist or community pharmacist who will be able to do that for you. I think it all just came together uh, very well in that respect and, and we jumped up to 72% by the uh, by the four-week mark and we had um, 60,000 flories sent out by practices in that, in that very short window um, specifically for blood pressure. Um, so we were really pleased. 
I think it was quite easy. I think the, the most difficult part was um, just um, encouraging pay, uh, practices to use the tools they already have. So we did um, some joined up work with Ardens who provided the searches um, and then we showed teams how to export to CSVs and then put those into the batch messaging tool in AppGRX. So it was really about finding that synergy between the two tools, which has been really powerful. And in fact, we're doing work now um, with the new coffee uh, to try and um, encourage practices to to look at the long-term conditions generally because um, once we've given them access to the flurries, it wasn't just blood pressure, they've got access now to all the long-term condition tools. Um, so we really want them to take advantage of those and um, we've now got education sessions going on for those for practices generally but also um, this year uh, our digital team has identified nearly 100 or over 100 digital champions in our system and um, so we're going to put on some kind of train the trainer sessions for those guys and then they can go out there and spread and spread the word and spread the training the user of interface is pretty straightforward uh, the video guides are there but actually sometimes you just do, you need that kind of push uh, and just a little webinar to, to show you how simple it is, is, is often really powerful and, and just gets you going. I think once you're going, then it's very straightforward. I think find, find somebody in your system who is, is kind of keen um, or is involved in an area of work that would benefit from this um, and give it a go. You, you can probably get what you need just from a simple short two minute you know, uh, video online from, from the AppCorrects website or somewhere else. The other option, I guess, is to find a digital champion in your system somewhere um, or reach out to an neighbouring practice, a neighbouring PCN or people that are doing similar work. And actually, one thing COVID really did do is join us up, really. So there's lots of kind of informal WhatsApp groups now in terms of PCNs and clinical directors have one and um, we have one for all the clinical directors across Kent and Medway and the, IC and the ICS and the ICB now. Um, we have uh, our digital champions now have their own, network, their own channel on Teams. Um, so lots of places people can get information and, and just share learning and, and share experience and say, oh, you know, I didn't realise you could use this for this or and just kind of inspire each other to, to try new things. So at practice level, um, the tool has been really useful, not just in that initial kind of quaff phase. We certainly used it to its fullest. We sent out batch, batch messages to all our patients. We hit 100% for our quaff target that year for that, for that year and, and did very well. This year, really, I think more the focus is on those we didn't reach. Really, NHS England are looking up for us to, to, to also reach out to those PCAs because they, by definition, may be those that be at most risk of kind of health inequalities and, and being excluded from, the, from treatment. I'm hoping that if we can start to target patients by month of birth and not just at the end of the cough year, that can, gives practices time to say, hey, look, we've tried twice, we haven't managed, but now going forward, we can just maybe get on the phone, maybe write some letters, uh, and there may be other, maybe some areas of the country, of the county, where um, you really want to go out into the community and um, go out into pubs, clubs, hairdressers, um, religious uh, centres, uh, and go to those communities um, because there are barriers to them coming to us. So in terms of practice for us, I guess for this year, that is, is a lot of the work, is that kind of looking at that PCA rate and trying to improve it. But now we're really trying to have a, a month of birth system where we recall patients just once for all their long-term conditions. Um, rather than having multiple appointments across the year. Um, we do all their blood tests, you know, for their drug monitoring as well as their long-term condition monitoring, just in one go, rather than, again, calling them in for a thyroid function this month and a diabetic check the next month. And I think for the patient then, that means it's uh, going to be a much better experience for them. Uh, and for us, it means far fewer contacts over the year. Previously, um, well, at the moment, really, I guess if you've got really poor control as an asthmatic or you've got really good control, we tended to treat them quite similarly. Um, but uh, one thing Accurates will enable us to do this year is send out a kind of pre-appointment questionnaire using the Flory and then we can then divide patients up into those with good control and those with poorer control. Those with good control perhaps don't need uh, you know, a full 10-20 minute appointment with our, with our asthma nurse. Um, they could perhaps be um, given information remotely uh, and the other thing we're considering is a, is a group consultation for those patients. Um, and uh, having a kind of community event. Um, those that have got poorer control need uh, that time with the nurse, and then we can really prioritise those patients, bring them in for, and, and get going with making adjustments to their medication and, and lifestyle, etc. So I think for us as a practice, that's one major change in the way we do things, and, and we can do the same for, for diabetes and COPD and uh, heart failure, and start to kind of risk stratify patients and, and work out who needs to come in and who doesn't. 
think um, over COVID, as with most practices, our, our COF uh, was paid on block. So there was no, there was no focus on, on chronic disease as there was previously. Um, and I think all our focus was on acute, you know, acute COVID presentations and vaccination. Um, and that meant that actually we had very low scores when it came to um, treatment to target rates, purely because patients were not coming in at all at one point which meant that the entirety of the opportunistic work we were doing was, was gone. We didn't have time to focus on processes and, and actually it was just about surviving, I think, for, for all of us as a country. Now, um, this quaff year that's just passed, we've hit 100%. Um, and our scores um, were, we were, we were pretty far away, actually. On March the 1st, I, I wondered whether we were going to get to hit target. Previous to COVID, we were always a practice that did achieve um, almost maximum you know, uh, quaff achievements. But thankfully, uh, the pilot meant we had access to batch messaging um, and the flurry, and we could very quickly, uh, within days, really get blood pressure measurements in from those that were able to, um, from their home machines, and those that couldn't were had access, had a had a link to a map where they could go to our local pharmacist. Um, and thankfully, we have a very proactive uh, community pharmacist here who who did lots of blood pressure readings for us for those that couldn't do them themselves. Previous to this piece of work, um, we've had uh, some community projects going on. Um, there's there's a there's a few ones called Hypertension Heroes, and they go out to to more difficult to reach populations, and have had real success in those in those small pockets around Kenton Medway. Um, but there wasn't something that we could use to to at scale get blood pressure readings in for our population. Accurex flurries and batch messaging really changed that for us, and we can see that the tool was needed by by, sheer, by the sheer fact that it's being used. We, as an ICS, have access to um, data via a, a business intelligence board that Accurex given ac us access to. We can see which practices are using the flurries. We can see how many texts they've sent, how many they've received back, how many responses they've had, um, and that really means we can start to marry that data up with um, what we're getting via other means so we can see right this practice is still actually you know the trend is not looking great I don't know that they're on course to, to hit their target this year and actually ah they're not really using Accurex to its full full capability and um, it means we can very easily then target those practices uh, and go in and put some support in for them we have got a good um, hypertension support package now um, and uh, actual physical people who we can send into practices and PCNs to really support them now to try and uh, improve their processes and um, and not you know not sit there and do the clinics for them um, which we were doing at some points um, but i think really enabling them to understand how they can use the tools to do this stuff on their own and do it very efficiently and very quickly so for me i think um, the impact this year i'm sure will be substantial and i'm really hoping we can hit that 77 percent uh, nhs england uh, target for um, for england this year One thing we realised over the pilot was that because we were doing this as a, as a very last minute, you've only got four weeks left, send a batch message out to all your outstanding uh, patients. Um, practices were potentially gonna, going to become overwhelmed with a lot of blood pressure readings coming in very quickly. So at one of the lunch and learn sessions, we worked um, with them to um, share a protocol that we'd kind of produced as a, as a hypertension team. Um, and it was a, a green, amber and red uh, rating for blood pressure. Um, so that for those with normal blood pressures, uh, an administrative person was very capable and able just to file that away. As, as you know with Accurex, it gets coded automatically into the system, which is fantastic, and that case is closed. For those in the AMBER category, uh, it meant that they were safe, but they needed um, a seven-day uh, blood pressure reading or a 24-hour or a blood pressure reading, depending on what the availability was. So again, um, that can be very much protocolised, and an administrative person could easily arrange that. and file the uh, result and make sure they action um, that. In Accurix, there's a, an option for the seven day flurry as well. So essentially all those people that sent in a, a one day blood pressure reading that was in the amber range, then got a subsequent text message saying, hey, it's time to do a seven day one on the basis of your previous result. So that was, uh, again, as I said, easily protocolized. And then the final group of people were those with blood pressures that were above a certain range where you would be more concerned, especially if they had symptoms, uh, and they really needed contact via from a healthcare professional, usually on the same day or within a day or two, depending on how, how high it was. 
Um, and again, on the protocol, would say something like, you know, discuss with your GG doctor or, or discuss with your with a clinician on site. I think if you are going to do this kind of um, process change, then those protocols really need to be in place for your practice to work out how you're going to deal with them. You know, just simple things like making sure there is somebody each day who's going to go through the results coming into the mailbox and, and acting them. The great thing about Accurix now compared to how it was previous is that there's now the ability to have um, folders uh, and user groups. Um, when Accurix first started, all, all your texts and response from patients would come back to the person that sent them, which, which was um, fine, but it, it meant if you're on holiday or you didn't really weren't the right person to deal with this, you couldn't really do much about it. Um, but Accurix being Accurix, you know, they've developed move things on very quickly and innovated and, and it means that um, now we have a, a blood pressure folder in our practice and we have a set users assigned to that folder uh, and in our practice we use our clinical pharmacy team um, we have two pharmacy te te technicians in our PCN and we have um, between the PCN and our practice three clinical pharmacists uh, and they run blood pressure clinics and they deal with blood pressure generally um, and in terms of titration and monitoring so they are essentially members of that of that group.